Hello, and welcome to Web Scripting. Uh, this is a video of Lesson 2. My name is Kayvon Shardar. I'm the adjunct professor at Bossier Parish Computer College for Computer Science. Let's get, on, let's get started with lesson number two, working with variables and data in script, in JavaScript. We're going to go over communicate with users through alert, prompts, and confirm, define variables of and data types, obtain user input and store it in a variables, report variable text to the client window, discern between concat sorry, concatenation and addition, use expressions and operators, define inline scripting. Giving the user a message, the alert method, using semicolons in JavaScript, getting data from the user, the prompt method, concatenation, requesting confirmation, the confirm method, and writing HTML dynamically, the document write method. So let's go over variables. So what is a variable? And variable data types, literals, naming variables, declaring variables, concatenating variables, and working with variables. So here, uh, let's understand what's a variable scope. So you're, you're going to have local variables and global variables. So for example, if you create a variable inside of a function, that's called a local variable. And that variable is only accessible from inside that function. Once that function is finished, that variable ceases to exist. If you want your variable to have to be accessible through all parts of the program, you have to declare it outside of any function, but inside of the script area where the JavaScript program is going to be at. We'll talk about assignments, arithmetic, string, and logical. So the data type specific information category a variable contains. So primitive date Primitive types is data types assigned a single value, such as a number, a positive or negative number, with or without decimal places, or number written using exponential notation. A Boolean is a logical value of either true or false. String is a text word such as hello world with quotation marks. And undefined is a variable that has never had a value assigned to it, that has not been declared or does not exist. And a null is an empty value. The null value uh, is a data type, and a value can be assigned to a variable, indicates no usable value, and ensures a variable does not contain any data. An undefined variable never had a value assigned to it, has not been declared, or does not exist. Uh, and indicates variable never assigned a value, not even null, and use determine if a value being used by another part of a script. So this is, this is a good example of uh, an undefined and a null uh, value. So here we're going to say var, so this is a create a variable state tax. So we create it here. Now if we try to call uh, or see well, what's the value of state tax, it's going to say it's undefined because it's never been used. So here, state tax, and you notice that it doesn't have a VAR in the front of it because we, we're not actually defining it anymore because it's been defined, but it doesn't have anything in it. But now we're having it have a value of 40. And now state tax is $40. Uh, you also have state tax equals null. So we now are assigning null to state tax, and the value is null. So working with data types, you know, strongly typed programming language requires declaration of the data types of variables. Strong typing, also known as static typing, data types do not change after declared. Loosely typed programming languages do not require declaration of the data types or variables. Loose typing, also known as dynamic typing, data types can change after declared. JavaScript interpreter automatically determines data types stored in a variable different types is the variable name. So here you could see uh, it's a string with hello world, uh, integer number, a floating point number, a boolean, and a null. 
understanding numeric data types. So JavaScript supports two numeric data types, and that's integer and floating point numbers. So obviously an integer does not have a decimal point, and floating point numbers does. Integer is a positive or negative number with no decimal places, and floating point number is a number that contains decimal places or written in exponential notation or scientific notation. Operators are used in expressions to store a value to, or return a value. So varieties include assignment, arithmetic, unary, or logical. Operator precedence, order in which operations in an expression evaluate. Uh, so when you have an expression, you have to know, well, what do I have to solve first within uh, that expression? And you have associativity, order in which operators of equal precedence execute. So you need to know if uh, you have to go from left to right to solve a, an expression or right to left. And that depends on, uh, you know, if you're on multiplicative, if you have a division and a multiplication in the same uh, area. So we see how that gets solved. And this is a great example of that, where you have 30 divided by 5 times 2, and that goes from left to right. So we divide first, and then we multiply versus uh, there's an, ex an assignment operator and compound assignment operators. So you have x equals y times equals plus plus x. So um, this is a compound multiplication assignment. So you see this here. So therefore, this goes from right to left. That's the way to solve this. So let's talk about Boolean values. So you, logical value of true or false used for make, for decision making. Which parts of a program should execute? Used for comparing data. Uh, JavaScript programming Boolean values, the words true and false. JavaScript converts true and false values to the integers 1 and 0 when necessary. Uh, so, uh, so for example, if you ask, hey, in JavaScript, you ask, is this value greater than 10? If it's true, then you do this. If it's false, you do something else. Um, and that could also have a value of uh, 1 and 0, for 1 for true and 0 for false. And this uh, shows new customers equals true, contractor rates equals false. So if you uh, show this in uh, JavaScript, so you'll see that new customers is going to be equal to true and contractor rates equals false. And you see how we put the, the Boolean right here and right here, and that and this is what is shown. Text tricks contains zero or more characters surrounded by double or single quotation marks. Uh, so you can have a text string with nothing in it and just open, you know, quotes in it or single quotes in it. Can be used as literal values or assigned to a variable. Uh, empty strings, so you could have zero length string value, and it's valid for literal strings. It's not considered to be null or undefined if it has nothing in it. So that's a big difference. Uh, to include a quoted string within a literal string surrounded by double quotation marks. So you surround the quoted string with single quotation marks. Uh, and we'll show this in the later slides. To include a quoted string with a literal string surrounded by single quotation marks, you surround the quoted string with double quotation marks. And strings must begin and end with the same type of quotation marks. So here's the example uh, that we that showed in the previous slide. So here this is saying this is a literal string. So that's the two quotation marks. Then this is this string contains a quoted string. So you have the double quotation marks on the outside. So it's right here and right here, and then you have the single quotes in the inside. And you can see that that's how it's shown here. On the next one, you have the single quotation marks on the outside, uh, and then you have the double quotation marks on the inside, and it shows the quoted as double in the inside. Um, so here you could see with double quotation marks on the outside, and this is with single quotation marks on the outside, and, and that's how it shows. String operators, concatenation operators. So uh, we're using the plus sign. So the plus sign 
can be used to concatenate strings together or for addition. And we'll show that uh, how that works. So here we have, we're defining definition equals, sorry, destination equals Honolulu or location equals Hawaii. So we can say, hey, destination equals destination. So now we're saying Honolulu, and then we're adding this string. We're concatenating the plus sign is in. You see how space is in space plus location. So destination is going to equal Honolulu is in Hawaii. Uh, the compound assignment operator, which is the plus equal, uh, you could actually do destination equals Honolulu, okay? And then you say destination plus equal is in Hawaii. And that would be added to destination. Uh, you could also do is in quotes and then plus location. Escape characters and sequences. So you have escape characters that tell a compiler to interpret what the character that follows has a special purpose. In JavaScript, escape characters is a backslash. Then you have escape sequence. Escape characters combined with other characters. Most escape sequences carry out special functions. So you have your escape sequence of backslash backslash. So that will show a backslash uh, inside of a string or uh, backspace, so if you want to have a backspace, a carriage return, double quotation marks inside of a double quotation mark string. Um, and, you know, so you could see it there, you know, you got for form feed, for horizontal tab, for a new line, uh, you have a null character, a single quotation mark, a vertical tab, and then you have for ASCII numbers or Unicode numbers. So for arithmetic, you know, the addition is used uh, for performing mathematical calculations. So you have the addition, the subtraction, the multiplication, uh, division, modulus, and then you have the increment, which is plus plus, or the decrement, which is minus mass minus, and the negation. You also have assignments, such as the one equal sign or the plus equal, which is a compound addition assignment or compound subtraction assignment, which is minus equal or a compound multiplication assignment, which is multiplication equal. And uh, here you could see the compound division assignment and the modulus assignment. You also have the comparison. So you have equal, equal, which compares is the left side the same as the right side. Strict equal is, is the same as the regular equal is the left, the same as the right side, but it ha both sides have to be of the same data type. And we'll discuss that a little bit further down in the presentation. Uh, you have not equal, which starts with a exclamation point, equal. Uh, and then the strict not equal, which is the same, you have to be both data sides. Uh, and then you have the greater than, less than, or greater equal or less than equal. For logicals, you have the and, which is uh, denoted with uh, double ampersigns, or the or, which is uh, denoted with two pipes, or the not, which is denoted with the exclamation point. You also have the concatenation operator, which is the plus sign. Remember, it's, it's not the same as the arithmetic side. Uh, this has to do with concatenating two strings together. And then you have the compound assignment operator, which is the plus equal. And you have some special access. Uh, so like property access is dot, the array index, you know, the function call, the comma, conditional expression, uh, which we'll go over uh, in some in slides that are following. Uh, you have delete, property exist, object type, new object, data type, and void. So binary operator requires an operand before and after the operator. So the operator is the, you know, it's like a plus sign or a negative sign um, or multiplication sign or division sign. And the operand is the actual value. Uh, the unary operator uh, requires a single operand either before or after the operator. So you perform mathematical calculations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, return the modulus of a calculation. So the arithmetic binary operators are plus minus star, 
activation or uh, modulus. And here we have uh, a, a, a good example where you have 15 divided by 6, uh, which is 2.5, but 15 modulus 6. So you would say, well, how many times does 6 go into 15? Well, it goes 2 times, right? So 2 times 6 is 12. The remainder is 3 in order for it to be 15. So the modulus would be 3, or the remainder. So the arithmetic binary operators. So value of operations on right side of the assignment operator assigned to variable on the left side. And this is where we have like a variable named arithmetic value equals x plus y. The result assigned to arithmetic var value variable. The division operator and then the modulus operator. So, uh, so you know, for the division, the standard mathematical division operator and the modulus returns terminating a result from the division of two integers. Uh, the assignment statement. You can include combination of variables and literal values on the right side. Cannot include a literal value as the left operand. JavaScript interpreter attempts to convert the string values to numbers and does not convert strings to numbers when using the additional operator. So the prefix operator is placed before a variable or the postfix operator is placed after the variable. So we're going to show you how that works uh, in the slides coming up. So uh, the arithmetic urinary operators are performed on a single variable using urinary operators. Increment urinary operators used as prefix operators, and the prefix operator placed before a variable. Decrement urinary operators used as a postfix operator. Postfix operator placed after a variable. For example, plus plus count and count plus plus, they both increment by one, but in different ways. And so let me show you. So if you have plus plus student ID, it assigns the student ID has a value of 100. You do plus plus student ID, it assigns it a value of 101. And then you do it again, it's 102, again it's 103. Versus if you do student plus plus, student ID equals 100, well that value is still assigned 100, but the next value is assigned 101. That's the difference between the prefix incrementer increment and a postfix increment. Use for assigning a value to a variable. So you have the equal sign assigns initial value to a new variable or assigns new value to an existing variable. The compound assign, assignment operators perform mathematical calculations on variables and literal values in an expression that assigns a new value to the left operand. So you have equal is an assignment, uh, the compound additional assignment, and then the subtraction assignment, the multiplicative assignment, the division assignment, and the modulus assignment. So here are some examples. So here we're saying hello, x equals hello, and then it will say x plus equals world. What it's doing is it's saying, okay, well, hello space plus world. That's what x equals. And same thing if you do x plus equals y, and here 100 is going to turn into 300 because you're adding 200 to it. If you're using the uh, subtraction, so 10 minus 7, so x is going to turn into 3. And here with multiplicative, it's going to be 2 times 6, which is 12, so x equals 12. And with a division, 24 divided by 3 is 8, so x is going to equal to 8. Uh, with modulus, the modulus is going to equal to 1 now, uh, once we did that. Um, and this is multiplicative, so 100 times 5 is going to equal to 500, so x is going to equal to 500. But if you try to say 100 as a string, and you try to multiply to an integer, it's going to give you a, an error. And that's when you see that NAN. You have comparison operators, so you compare two operators. Determine if one numeric value is greater than another. So the Boolean value of true or false returned after compare. So you're going to compare left and right. If they're equal, it's equal to true. If they're not equal, it's going to be equal to false. 
And here is uh, where we could see that. So you have equal, equal, and then you have strict equal. Strict equal is the same. We're going to evaluate if the left equals to right, but if they're of the same data type. Uh, that means is the left side an integer and the right side an integer? Or is the left side a float or the right side a float? Or is the left side an integer and the right side an integer? Um, so uh, there are ways to make sure uh, that they're equal, but they're straight. Uh, with regular uh, equal equal, uh, one could be a string and one could be an integer. For example, you have a string five and an integer five. Are they both equal? And, and it will uh, say yes or no. And you also have not equal, strict not equal, uh, greater than, less than, greater than or equal, or less than or equal. So we have a conditional operator, and this is something uh, that I said earlier in the slides. So you have a condition and then a question mark. So that condition is true or false. So if that condition is true, you do expression one. If it's false, you do expression two. And those expressions are separated in the code. Um, so here's an example. So n variable is equals 150. So is this true or false? Is n variable greater than 100? That is true. So that means that result equals n variables greater than 100 because it's true. If it was false, uh, if int variable uh, was 50, then this would be false, then we would show the false result, that it's less than or equal to 100. The AND operator, uh, we have the AND, OR, or NOT. So remember the AND is the double AND percent, uh, the OR is double pipes, and the NOT is the exclamation point. Uh, those are logical operators. You also have property access, so you, you want to have access to an object, you press period right after it, and then it'll tell you what else it could do. You have an array index, you have the function call, the comma, you have a conditional expression, which we uh, explained. You have delete, property exist, and that's in. Uh, object type, instance of, new object, so that's new. So uh, that's sort of what we instantiate uh, an object type of or void. So here we have a number, integers and floating point numbers, string, which are text strings, boolean, it's true or false, object, it's an object arrays and null variables, functions and undefined variables, values returned by type of operator. And uh, we have inline scripting and simple user events, so event handlers. User-generated events are not script-driven event handlers. You have onload and un-unload event handlers. So an un-unload event handler is used to process or handle the unload event. So the unload event handler is used by scripts that run as the page is loaded in the browser. Um, you have reserved words such as JavaScript keywords and JavaScript reserved words. Uh, so in summary, we talked about how to communicate with the user through alert, prompt, and confirm. We define variables and data types. We obtain user inputs and store it in variables. Report variable text to the client window. Discern between concatenation and addition. And use expressions and operators and define inline scripting. Uh, so please remember, you could always communicate with me. My name is Kayvon Shardar. You could email me at Kayvon or kshardar at bpcc.edu. You could call me or text me at 318-453-8082. You could call me any day at any time. It could be really late at night, really early in the morning. It could be in the middle of the night. Uh, don't hesitate to contact me. I'm available for you anytime. Uh, have a great day, and uh, hopefully you do great in your home.